Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm almost done calibrating my um, uh, Polymaster probe. Figured I'd go outside and show you some rain samples directly off the car just for giggles. Uh, my Geiger counter here, uh, my good Geiger counter is currently inside on radiationnetwork.com and I don't, want, I don't want to take it off because I want to try to match up some of my readings with some of the peaks that it's been getting. So I'm using this little guy here, this is a CRM100. See it has a little tiny itty bitty little micro window on it so it's not the most sensitive thing on earth but it's not too bad it's getting 20 something counts per minute plus or minus I'm not too worried about the exact amount then I have a Ludlum uh, model 12 with a 44-2 scintillator on it and we're in times 10 mode and I'm getting about well, let's hold the detector up here a little ways away so it'll drop down because the cement's probably a little radioactive itself I'm getting somewhere near 2,000 counts per minute let's cut the sound off and then with the Polymaster, I'm getting 0 0.07 microsieverts per hour, which is perfectly acceptable for this unit since it does actually read correctly in energy-specific units. You'll notice that I'm not getting anything off the paper towel or the plastic bag. Um, I always test these, but I rarely show myself testing these, but I figured, you know, since somebody mentioned it, I would show today that I do. And it is quite just a piece of normal... Oops, flip it upside down hard to do this one-handed you know it's a piece of paper you know what the hell so let me ball the paper up and hold the paper up against the Ludlum and as you can see the Ludlum doesn't do much of anything it sits at about 2,000 counts per minute so let's go on out to the car all right so we're in front of a car as you can see it's all grassy and hill like and the weather is pretty crappy so here's this car and I'm in front of it and I'm going to take the Polymaster and put it down in a second. As you can see, I have a blank paper towel. There's nothing sinister or hidden in the blank paper towel. But I don't want to put the Polymaster directly onto water. So there it is. And put, oh, it's at 0 0.07 still. And we'll put it down here. And I don't, still don't see it changing too much. It's not going up or anything. Let's switch it over to Bluetooth mode. Oops, dropped my paper towel. And the Geiger counter is not doing much of anything. It's actually a little lower than it was before. So we get the Polymaster software going. As you can see, the background for the detector itself is even lower. The background for the detector is now dropping down to, let's put it on slow mode so it'll stabilize. And it's looking like 1200 counts per minute. That might go up or down a little bit as it stabilizes, but not too far off. 16, you know, 8, 0, uh, what is it, 8 counts per second. Nothing has really changed. It's, it's actually gone down a little. So the question is, what do we got, what do we have going on here? We'll take a paper towel, since this is like the cliche method. See the paper towel? See how there's nothing in it? It's the plastic bag. See how there's nothing in it? We'll ball these guys up, and we will put them right in front of the probe, and you'll see that nothing happens nothing because there's nothing in them okay well, let's keep this in video the whole time put that there we wish i hadn't balled this up it would have been a lot easier if it had not been balled up but anyway you get the idea it's just a plain piece of paper and we're gonna fold it up and we're going to take it with our hand see nothing on the hand and we're going to wipe the car down with it this is the cliche test and what happens here, of course, is we're picking up um, material that's hit the metal and been attracted to the metal, which for whatever reason seems to be effective. I'm gonna, oops, let me kind of move this on top of the car. I'm trying to like show everything here, show the nasty interior of the car. Wipe some off. Okay, and now we have this dirty filthy piece of paper and what's the difference with the dirty filthy piece of paper well look at that you can even hear it apparently the dirty filthy piece of paper is higher in radioactivity than the natural background in fact, if we ball the dirty piece of paper up and put it right here, we can watch the Ludlum go up, 
1800 counts per minute. I had a lot more of it in my bag test I did earlier. In fact, let's cut to slow mo. Oops. And then we'll put it in front and watch. See it go up. See it go down. See it go up. See it go down. Now, watch this. Let's get a little bit more and then put it inside of the bag and then put it on the Polymaster itself for detection. Okay. Do do do. Top of the car. Do do do. Do the back of the car. Every single place where there could be some dirt. The dirt, by some means, seems to be a, a factor here. It's probably working as some kind of filter somehow holding the radon daughters more tightly against the paper as opposed to letting them get away. Let me keep my hand in front here so you don't see all my car markings. Okay, so now we've got a really disgusting piece of paper. And if this has radon daughters on it, then my hand is now completely contaminated. But that's okay, I'm not worried about it. Because keep in mind, no matter how bad it is, apparently we walk through the rain every single day and get it all over our hair and bodies without any real care or worry. I'm not trying to trivialize it, but I mean, you know, you get the point. Okay, so here we are at seven counts per second. We'll put this on top and see what we get. Assuming it'll eventually go up. There it goes. Takes it long enough, doesn't it? But, um, as you can see, you know, maybe you can see, get the light on, it's going up just a little bit. If I push the bag nice and close to it, it goes up a little more. There. Now, we'll run a spectrum. This is kind of difficult to do outside, but I thought kind of fun to watch it outside as opposed to inside. And we get our spectrum going. And we put the bag back on top since it has fallen off. Get back over there. Hold this up against this, and we'll see what we get. Now this could take a minute. And of course, there's a couple problems with this test. The first one is obviously things could have been swapped and could have been switched, you know. I didn't have a camera pointed at everything the whole time. What I might do next time is put the camera on a tripod and have two cameras and then do a picture in picture so you can actually watch me walk around with a camera and you can see that nothing is swapped, nothing is flipped, nothing is taken out. But then again, I guess it doesn't really require that level of proof since I'm not showing anything amazing. This is all pretty common, normal stuff. Um, if I were to come out here and get a high cesium level or something that was unexpected, I would then probably have somebody else come out and help me by holding the detector while I um, ran the test, you know, to make sure that it, everything was in the up and up. So I'm going to take this and lay it on top of this to hold the bag closer to it. There. See on top. Interestingly enough, I still can't get over how nothing shows up on the um, detectors. Various detectors don't show much of anything at all. I put the detector against the car. Not much. So apparently it takes a significant surface area to generate a little bit. Because the detector doesn't do much of anything. Let's see. Where are we getting here? And you can already, oops, you can already see the spectrum forming. Apparently. God, this is so ghetto. Alright, look closely. Is this peak right here? That peak is at somewhere between six. Oh, there it goes. Right on the dot 609. Now let's do peak info. What does peak info say? 622.69 is the centroid. The temperature's changing out here, so it's probably messing with it. But if you look closely, 609 is what it says right there. 609.1, and you can see that's almost dead down the peak. There just happens to be a little bit more on this side of it. And so, now let's move over. It's more like 622 because the temperature is dropping. My point is that is bismuth 214. Cesium 137 should be right here. But there isn't anything right there. Now, yeah, there could be, and there probably is a little, probably a couple Becquerels per liter. 
of ZZ-137, but it can't be detected because the Bismuth-214 peak is way too prominent. You see that really, really prominent Bismuth-214 peak? Yeah, I know the camera picture is sort of terrible, but you get the point. All right, so we can see a classic radon daughter forming as I slowly freeze to death. Let me kind of expand this out a little bit. So that right there is Bismuth-214. Hey, that, that's lead-214, lead-214, lead-214. Some x-rays of some variety. I'd have to look that up to figure out which ones they are. But there you go. And as you can see, the um, sample is certainly radioactive. But you notice that it's mostly alpha has been produced. The plastic bag is blocking a lot of them. If I get really close to the detector, I'll get a little bit. The plastic bag blocks most of the alphas. So would paper. But bismuth-214 and lead-214 are potent gamma emitters, and you can see them right there yourself. I would probably be getting four or 500 counts per minute on the um, Inspector EXP+, Plus, but I don't have that out here. Nice. Remember, radon is a ca major cause of lung cancer and kills approximately 22,000 people per year, according to the CDC. So while everybody runs around freaking out that there could be trace levels of Fuku fallout, which is bad and harmful and is a, a, of great concern, I'd like to point out that there is actually a larger form of radioactive fallout which falls on us every single day. It's perfectly natural and kills plenty of people per year, and nobody seems to care about it. And that's fine. Most people's priorities are pretty screwed up anyway, so I kind of, I guess that kind of makes sense. But regardless, test your houses for radon. And this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Bye-bye.